Hello students. In this lesson, you will learn about phrasal verbs. What is a phrasal verb? Maybe you are asking that. Well, it is actually a special kind of verb. It's a verb combined with a preposition or adverb or sometimes both to create a new meaning. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that, but I want you to understand that phrasal is an adjective, okay? So when we say phrasal verb, this word here, phrasal, is describing the type of verb it's an adjective and it comes from the noun phrase. Phrase is the noun form. And when we, we talk about a phrase, we're talking about a group of words that have a particular meaning when used together. So in that same way, a phrasal verb is a group of words that has a particular meaning when they are used together. So you, you start with a verb and you combine it with either a preposition or an adverb. So here we have the regular verb drop, and then we have a preposition or an adverb. It doesn't matter if it's a preposition or an adverb here. Some are going to be prepositions. Some will be adverbs. Some um, will be a combination of both a preposition and an adverb. I'll show you an example of that later. So we won't, we won't bother to figure out if this is a preposition or an adverb because that is not relevant. What's What's relevant is understanding that when we put the word drop, which is a regular verb, with the word off, when we put these two together, it forms a new meaning. So by itself, the word drop is, when it's by itself, it's not a phrasal verb, it's a regular verb and it means to fall by accident, such as don't drop, oh, that needs a the, don't drop the camera in the river. Don't drop the camera in the river. That's its normal form. But when we add the off after it, it has new meanings. Okay, one of them is to take a person or thing to a place and leave them or it there. Okay, for example, my friend needed a ride to the bus station. So I dropped her off there. I took her in my car and I drove her to the bus station she got out of the car, she went away. That's the same thing as I dropped her off. It's just easier to say I dropped her off. Okay, you could also drop off a thing, like my neighbor needed to borrow some money, so I dropped off money at her house. Okay, now this phrasal verb, drop off, actually has three meanings. So another meaning would be to fall asleep. So like she tried to read her book, but dropped off before she finished one page. Basically she fell asleep. And then another meaning is to, is to decrease, I'm gonna put a two here to decrease in number or amount. So here's an example, the number of tourists visiting Israel dropped off 
sharply in the year 2020. It, the number dropped off sharply in the year 2020. So it, the number went down. Okay, so these are three different meanings of the word dropped off, drop off, which is a phrasal verb. This is a phrasal verb. Now, phrasal verbs have, this one is not a phrasal verb, okay? So this is just an example of it when it's a regular verb. We're not gonna, we're not going to um, spend a lot of time talking about the regular verbs. So I just wanted to show you that it has a different meaning. But over here, there are some rules about phrasal verbs. Some of them are separable and some of them are inseparable. When I say separable, I mean that you can take the words, the phrasal verbs like drop and off, and you could separate them and you could put another word in between. Okay, so like here, I, I dropped, dropped her off. Dropped is part of the phrasal verb and off is the other part. And it's okay to put her in between. You could even put it, you could say dropped it off. You could say, I want to drop off my friend you don't have to separate it. You say, I wanna drop off my friend, okay? And then you wouldn't be separating it. That works too. You could say, drop it off. Like um, I dropped off the money, I need to drop it off. But if you, if you use it, which is a pronoun, you can't say drop off it. You could say drop it off. I want to drop it off at his house. But you don't say I want to drop off it at his house. That doesn't sound right. But you can separate it if you put in a, a, a pronoun in the middle, drop her off, drop it off, drop some money off. You could say I want to drop off. I want to drop some money off at your house. So then you have um, even a couple of words in between. So that's possible. Now there are actually some, some uh, phrasal verbs like that are inseparable. That means you can't separate them. You cannot. For example, this meaning here, when she tried to read her book but dropped off, you can't say, that she, she wasn't, you can't separate it. It has to stay together. So this one is inseparable. Uh, this one, you must not ever separate the two words for this meaning. If you're using this particular meaning, it always stays together, okay? And then with this one, with the numbers dropping off, the decrease in number or amount, the numbers drop off. Yeah, you can't separate this one either. This one cannot be separated. So it really depends on the verb, on the phrasal verb, if it can be separated or not. And it's not, there is no special pattern. It depends on the, the meaning of the word. Now, as far as transitive or intransitive, there's other rules. Transitive means that an object or something receives the action. So for example, drop off money. You have to say that something is receiving the action in this one. You can't just drop off. You, you, you have to say that it's something. You have to say, I dropped off something. I dropped off my friend, I'm gonna drop it off. There's always something that receives the action. And so because there's something that receives the, it, it has to receive the action, therefore it's transitive, okay? And you can't have, you can't have that meaning without 
it being transitive. So anytime you use this, this particular meaning of taking a thing or a person somewhere, you always have some somebody, something that receives the action. But in these two down here, when you drop off to sleep or the numbers drop off, there's nothing that receives that action. So these two are intransitive. These do not receive action. So it really depends on the meaning, once again, of the, of the verb. So we're gonna look at some more examples of phrasal verbs. I want to also point out that when you have a phrasal verb like drop off and you need to conjugate it, maybe you give it a past tense or a present progressive tense. Like you could say in the past tense, I dropped off the book or I am dropping off to sleep. Okay, when you, when you are doing, when you're using it in different verb tenses, you only conjugate the first word, the part that's the, a, a verb. You don't conjugate the off part. So you just make the first word change its form based on the tense. I will drop off, dropped, dropping, sort of thing like that, okay? That's an important thing to know about phrasal verbs is you only conjugate the very first word. Now let's look at another example of a phrasal verb. So we're gonna look at throw away. Throw, oops. How did I do that? Throw away. The first word is the verb part. The away part gets added on to give it a new meaning. Now, originally throw, if by itself, would be like you throw a ball, you know, you just make something fly in the air. But when you throw away something, it has a totally different meaning. Now it means to, let's see if I can get this in here, put the meaning in here. Okay, I'll just type it in. To discard something into the garbage because it is not needed anymore. It's no longer needed. Okay, so it's not needed to discard something. You, you throw it away, you throw it away in the garbage. Okay, so example, um, please, Throw away your candy bar wrapper when you are done, when you are finished eating. Please throw away your candy bar wrapper. Put it in the garbage. Just put it in the garbage. Now you, it, in this case, like, like this one, which is separable, um, throw away is also separable because you can paste it here. You can throw it away, throw it away. You can throw something away. All right. So these are this this one is separable because it's it's going to have you can put a word in between. And it's transitive because you have to have something that you are throwing away. You can't just throw away. You have you have to have a thing 
that that gets thrown away. I threw away my paper towel. I threw away my garbage. I threw away all those papers. All the papers were thrown away. There's always a thing. You can't just say, I threw away. You can't say that. There's it, You have to have a thing so it's transitive. It re something, something receives, something receives the action. Okay, it's transitive. And um, same thing with with drop off. When you are dropping off a thing, it, you have to have something that receives the action. Um, it, whereas in these two, nothing receives any action. It's just, they just happen. Okay, let's look at one more example of a phrasal verb. I'm gonna show you one that has three words. Look forward to. This one has three words. It has the original word, which is look, it's a verb but by itself, it means something different. Forward is um, an adverb, and then to is a preposition. So we put them all together, look forward to, it has a totally different meaning from look, okay? So it means to wait for something pleasant. that will happen when you're looking forward to something you're saying i'm i am looking forward to my vacation okay so it's something you're really happy is going to happen you look forward to it and it can't be separated you don't look something forward to. It always stays together. So in this case, it's inseparable and it's transitive. You have to have something you're looking forward to. You can't just say you're looking forward to. You have to say what? I'm looking forward to meeting you. I'm looking forward to um, next semester. I'm looking forward to my next English lesson. So it's always something that somebody is looking forward to. You have to have that in there. So, and you can't put words in between. So when you are looking at phrasal verbs, you're not just learning what is the meaning, you're learning, can I separate the words? Do I have to have something that receives the action? And what are the other meanings that could have more than one meaning? Like this, this one here has three meanings. Sometimes, sometimes phrasal verbs will even have more than three meanings. So it really depends. So when you're learning about these words, there's lots of rules to learn of how they work. And all of these here are phrasal verbs. So, okay, this is our introductory lesson. Now I think you understand a little bit better what a phrasal verb is. And uh, good luck as you continue to learn English.